Why is it so hard to pick a winner of the Kentucky Derby? We've got Jim Cherusmi. He's joining us right now from our Wall Street Journal sports team. And you guys are trying to crack the code over there before this race happens. We're going to get to your sort of method of madness in a minute. But what's different about the Kentucky Derby versus the other races? Well, first of all, there's 20 horses. And it's the most horses in a field in North America. Basically, most of these horses are used to running against 10 or less horses in a race. There's 20 here. So essentially, you can be eliminated right at the start. Right. Essentially, every well, the starting gate opens, everyone's uh, trying to get a position, and pretty much you can get knocked out of the race before the race even starts. And just having more horses there, does that actually, for some horses, is it, dis is it discombobulating to them? Do exactly. I mean, hard to ask the horse, but do, right. do, do exactly. the experts think well, so? Well, there's over 150,000 people in the crowd cheering. Right. Most of them have had many mint juleps throughout the day. <laughs> so, and you know, and then the, it's a loud crowd. These horses, they're young horses. They're about to run a race. They've never even run this distance. The Derby is a mile and a quarter. They've never run that far in their lives. And the, but the Derby is not even the longest of the race because after the Kentucky Derby uh, in the Triple Crown races, they've got to then go on to run Belmont, which is longer by right. how much? It's a mile and a half. So essentially, basically, by the time they get to the top of the stretch, the horse that you're betting on has, has basically thinks, all right, I've, every time I've run, I stop now. Yeah. So basically, they still have to run the length of the stretch. That's what makes this race so unpredictable, is that you're basically trying to predict. I'm reading the racing form, and but I'm trying to predict what they've, they're going to do in the future, not what they've done. And the racing form only basically accounts for what they've done in the past. We have to predict what they want to do in the future to make money. Does anybody look at weather? I mean, I'm sure everybody looks at everything but is weather considered like one of the major factors and and I think it's going to be rainy this weekend isn't it right it's supposed to rain in Louisville on Saturday and there is a factor where you can see you know whether the horse likes the mud but it again <laughs> You don't know if the horse has never run in the mud. How do you predict whether the horse runs in the mud? So you look at the bloodlines of the horse to say, oh, you know, the joke that the, you know, the mother was a mudder kind yeah. of. So. So now that you've laid out just how difficult it is, you guys are going to be brave and you are digging in. You're going to try and pick a winner. Uh, WSJ is going to do that. How, what, are, what are you doing? How? What are you using to predict your winner? Well, we're looking at numbers in the past to try to predict the future, which isn't necessarily an exact science. But for instance, only four of the last 33 favorites have won the race. So that's a pretty low percentage. So right off the bat, we're going to eliminate the favorite. Okay. Uh, the average winner is usually around 15 to 1, so we're going to look for a price there. Whereas, you know, the favorite will go off around 7 to 2, 4 to 1 in that range. We're going to look for a price 15 to 1. So we're targeting about six horses in that range that are going to be between 12 and 18 to 1. And then you're going to scrap it out between each other, just figure out whose horse is. Who are you, who right. are you, who are you right. leaning toward? So basically, I like this horse named Orb that basically is, is the price is going to be low. It's, he, he's going to be either the favorite or the second favorite by the time they go to post. But as I said, I don't want to pick that horse. So I'm going to a horse named It's My Lucky Day who finished second to Orb in the Florida Derby. So basically, he, he had the lead and then Orb passed him in, uh, near the finish line. So I'm going to say in the Kentucky Derby, he's going to hold on this time and I'll get a better price, 15-1 to 1 versus 4-1. to 1, And uh, that's my one two. It's My Lucky Day, Orb, Exacta. Any of your colleagues pushing back on that? Well, uh, my colleague Pia Catton it loves Orb. So I, I've been selling her that, okay, with the added race, with the added distance, uh, It's My Lucky Day is going to turn the tables. And It's My Lucky Day is a better name than Orb, I was going right? to say, we're going to see if it's your lucky day, Jim. Right. All right, thanks so much for being with us.